You know, there's not a lot I regret in motherhood, but there are 10 things. Hello, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brittany Bay Lynn. I have a two and a half year old daughter and I have shared a lot of my life online, but I've never spoke about my regrets. These are gonna be the things that I would recommend to my friends if they were having a kid or if I was to have a second child, which I don't know if that's happening. Before we hop in, give this video a like. It helps out my channel a lot and let me know in the comments down below what your mom regrets were, what you would do differently, and let's see if we have any shared regrets. Number one is going to be that I did not take any parenting, lamas, birthing classes, and this was mostly due to the fact that at 20 weeks pregnant, the world shut down and there was a pandemic, so I didn't totally have the option to do these in-person things. I did take a breastfeeding course online, which honestly didn't really prepare me for the reality of what it was like to breastfeed. If I were to get pregnant again and there wasn't a pandemic, I would 100% do in-person classes, not just because I feel like it's easier to learn stuff in person, but you get to make a friend group immediately who is pregnant at the exact same time as you that lives in your area, not just for yourself, but also for the dads. I 100% feel like the dad should take these classes. I feel like that is the bare minimum, but they can also make dad friends. I feel like for dads, it's really hard to make dad friends. Just as much as I feel like the knowledge is power from these classes to prepare you for parenting, birth, you and your partner, but it also gives you that village built in of people going through the exact same thing you are. Number two, not having a doula. And it just feels like, again, you have another person who is on your side, a part of your village, really building up your village while you're pregnant is so key. One, again, I couldn't do it because of the pandemic, but even prior to the pandemic, when I was kind of looking into the whole pregnancy thing, it just seemed like a added cost luxury item, but I feel like they might've even been covered by insurance. I, I, I didn't even look and I couldn't have had them in the birthing room because at the time I could only have one person in COVID, but wow, what a great experience that would have been to have like another person to coach me through because I just felt so unprepared for what was birth. If you did have a doula, let me know what they did for you and if they were covered by insurance or if you felt like it was worth the cost because I do feel like I would get one in my next pregnancy if I was to get pregnant. Number three, not having family or most especially the grand, the soon to be grandparents in the room. Again, this was something I couldn't do due to COVID, but even prior to COVID restrictions, I was like, you know what? I just want my partner in there. I'm gonna be exposed. I might poop myself. I, you know, don't wanna be thinking about opinions of other people. But now that I've went through birth, there are so many people that see you poop yourself, expose yourself, just make the weirdest noises <laughs> ever come into human existence. You really, really don't care at that time how exposed you are and how vulnerable you are. All you can think about is the support you want around you. And if you have any reservations now that like restrictions are opening or totally opened up and you were like, oh, I don't want, you know, too many people in there, I definitely would have <laughs> as many people as possible. My hoo-ha is on display and I just want a support team. And it really is such an incredible experience. I want as many people to witness it and see how powerful I am and see this human come into existence for the first time. I, it really breaks my heart that my mom and my daughter's other grandma couldn't be there because they should have been there and they should have saw my vagina. Number four, not exercising in my pregnancy. Again, I'm gonna bring up the whole COVID thing because prior I was doing like light workouts at the gym because I was already a part of a gym and already working out. And they say, if you know, you're already doing some level of fitness to continue it, it's healthy throughout pregnancy. I wouldn't like start lifting weights for the first time ever. But if you know are already doing the Stairmaster, you can continue doing that. I also had like done a month of prenatal yoga, which I was really starting to get into. And then 20 weeks pregnant, 
couch potato. I mean, the world shut down, there was nothing to do, and at that point I was starting to get bigger and tired, and aesthetically I was like, I don't care if I get stretch marks, I don't care if I get huge, I'm gonna eat what my body tells me to eat, still, you know, trying to stay nutritious, but, I, you know, I don't care how much weight I gain, that was like my thought, like why, I'm not gonna work out, my body is tired, so I'm gonna rest, and I'll gain whatever weight, it's fine. But now after giving birth, I understand how important it is to keep your strength up during your pregnancy. This is because when you give birth, it is the biggest athletic performance of your life and you need to be as strong as possible to get through it. I definitely lost all, I mean, you're gonna lose your core strength, but I lost all of my strength. I know for a fact that if I had worked out throughout pregnancy and kept my strength, I would have performed stronger in birth and I would have had an easier postpartum experience because when I tell you how unstrong I was in every aspect of my body postpartum, it felt like my entire body was a waterbed. I, ha I could barely sit up and yes, a lot of this is normal postpartum, but there is zero way that working out would have not helped me function stronger postpartum. I, I mean, I died cystic recti. I, it was just an absolute hot mess. Number five, not teaching my child to sleep with any noise but a sound machine. Now, I really like how I approached baby sleep, toddler sleep, I have videos on that, I'll leave them down below. As a first time mom, I am so sleep deprived when she would fall asleep, I would just be like, shh, like a little mouse in the house. And I've trained my daughter to, you know, wake up when she hears noise because that's mom waking her up normally or mom coming to get her. Throughout toddlerhood, I did slowly increase the volume of my TV while she's napping and there is a certain level of noise I can make, but she's definitely just really used to silence but a noise machine. But I also definitely think when you have your second, you don't have any control over the noise in your house, and the second child is just used to hearing a toddler when they're sleeping, so I'll be forced into this if I have another kid. Number six, I made a list of just things I regret buying. I regret buying open swaddles, they're the traditional swaddle that a lot of people do love, but there are so many super easy swaddles that my daughter slept better in. There's like the swaddle me, there's the Velcro swaddles, there's there's a lot of other options. And I bought like four cute swaddle blankets and I really didn't use them for anything. Buying more than one carrier, I thought the carriers were really cute. I only used one carrier, but I had probably four of them. Some the same kind, but different colors because I wanted them to go to different outfits. Just first time mom stuff, I shouldn't have done it. The bumbo, this is a little thing to get a baby to sit in and their like legs kind of come out and it gets them used to sitting up. I find this silly in so many ways now. Because if your child is not sitting up yet, then they're not ready yet. And if they are, then they're in a high chair eating. And also my daughter never fit into the bumbo. I think I got it at like four months because her legs didn't fit in. She was like, she was so cute. She just, she didn't fit. Baby shoes. They're stupid. I know they're so cute to buy, and I get it. They're like the first thing every new parent buys for some reason, but your baby's not gonna wear them. And I've heard that if your baby wears them, they're more likely to wear shoes, and it's kind of like getting them used to it. I didn't find my baby having any issues switching to shoes when she was walking. So I would just not buy shoes until they're using the shoes. Number seven, ever putting Coco Melon on TV. And no, I'm not saying that there's some secretive plot to control and uh, mind control your children. It's just, it's so annoying. And so I would just, for my second one, Coco Melon just doesn't exist. We're gonna watch shows that I can handle watching for a year and a half on repeat. Oh, Coco Melon. Number eight, not really having mom friends the first year of my daughter's life. This was just, I live in LA and even though I'm in my 30s, I'm the, you know, the first of my friends to have kids and I didn't get to go to the parenting classes and meet other pregnant people and the first year was just very 
lonely going through all of that. Of course, I had you guys in this community that was so helpful and monumental in my life, but there is nothing like being able to hang out with someone that your child is the same age of and just have like a moment of adulthood while still being a parent and that community really community is like so important i will say i have since made mom friends and it makes the world of difference even if like you guys get like a night out together like you're on the same vibe like you want to go out early you want to leave early you want to go hard for like a short amount of time you want to like have fun and then go to sleep at like 10. number nine not putting any kind of a headwear on my daughter when she was a baby i did beanies you know when she was a baby she accepted it i didn't think it was going to be an issue and my daughter you know didn't really have a lot of hair and so i didn't do bows or hair ties or anything and then when she started getting hair in toddlerhood it was just so foreign for her to put like a hair tie in or a bow and it really took a lot of time getting her used to it and she's still not really and now we're at the point where like hair is in her face and it's kind of a necessity and i've noticed my mom friends with kids who did you know bows or headbands or anything in their hair consistently never ran into that issue like i'm running into i'm sure they put up a little bit of a fight but they accepted a lot better than a child who you know went with no headband or headwear or anything number 10 and this is the most important one i would never do well i'm kind of trapped in it now but i would never <laughs> recommend getting a dang cake pop at starbucks for your child and i'm not saying oh there's too much sugar or like dietary stuff like i totally believe there should be like a well balanced diet and that your kid should you know just as much respect fruits and vegetables that they do towards sweets all i'm saying is that with the cake pop at starbucks there are so many starbucks's and it becomes a very quick for your child to recognize a starbucks and you yourself as a mom sometimes want to treat yourself to a starbucks and they're going to associate that little mermaid the green the cup with the cake pop and if you go and you do not get a cake pop you're just you're you're in it you you can you can you can deal with the tantrum and you know move on from that and not do the cake pop but they see it again it's same you're always going to have a tantrum if you don't do the cake pop they they just make that connection it's like Pavlo's dog effect when they ring the bell they salivate you know they see the mermaid they want the cake pop I now have to go out of my way to park in a different location for my child's like toddler gym class because where I was parking was next to a Starbucks and so we'd walk out of there and she she just she knew she knew so now I have to park on the other side so we don't pass that flipping Starbucks and now I don't get Starbucks with my daughter unless I'm like okay today is a cake pop day because sometimes some days are a cake pop day but if I was to do it again I would just I would never let her know that that is what is in that refrigeration thing. And now I know when I have a second one, my, my toddler is going to train the other one to know what Starbucks is. So I'm trapped. All in all, I really do love how I approached my journey. These are just things I wish I had done differently or if I have another chance, I will do differently in the future. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. I look forward to reading your motherhood regrets down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye. You are the one who will survive. Been bad